hear this message today. I want you to hear it. And I want you to really search yourself. What goes around comes around. Man, that's an old wives' tale that sadly many of us have found to be true. Here's one that has morphed a bit to be better understood. You reap what you sow. Yeah. This one is actually out of a letter Paul wrote to the churches in Galatia. More specifically, it says, Paul wrote, a man reaps what he sows. And I have to, you know me and my scientific mind, I have to throw little Isaac Newton in here. For every action, there is an opposite and equal reaction. Correct. Now, why am I talking about reaping and sowing and reacting this morning? I want you to think. And I want you to ask yourself, I truly want you to ask yourself, am I sowing what I eventually am going to reap? Am I sowing what I want to reap? Today I want to talk about acts of kindness. You see the bulletin. What they are, why they are, and more specifically, what they are not. Grab your Bibles if you would please. We are going to be turning to the book of Ephesians. Paul's letter, Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. We're going to be reading beginning in the 29th verse. Listen to these words penned by the Apostle Paul. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only, only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form, not just some, every form of malice. Be kind, be kind and be compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other, just as in Christ forgave you. Boy, that ought to bring to mind the Lord's Prayer that we just said. Lord, forgive us as we forgive others. Word of God for the people of God. I want to tell you about an act of kindness. In the end... You won't believe it to be true. I promise you, you won't. But I assure you, it is the absolute truth. During World War II, there were many POW camps, German POW camps dotted across the United States. I will tell you, the one closest to here is within an hour's drive. You can go to Camp Robinson in North Little Rock and go out on one of the ranges and you can still see the foundations of the buildings that held German POWs. Another one that's fairly close by geographically is in Oklahoma. Those of you familiar with the Oklahoma City area, there's a little town south of there called Paul's Valley. There was one there. In the summertime, oh, I remember it when I would go home for family uh, reunions, my dad's family. In the summertime, the sun would bounce off of that red clay, and the heat could be sweltering. The story is told of a little boy, shoeless, wearing overalls, who carried water, to that POW camp. This water was called gypsum water. Gypsum water. 
but it was locally called drip water because it was the water that came up out of the ground around the oil wells. It was cool, but it had a slight oily taste to it. This big-eared, shoeless little boy would carry buckets of that water to the POW camp and hand a ladle through the fence to the POWs who just drank every drop. And he would stand there until every drop in that bucket was gone. He would return to the camp often during the summer times, performing this simple act of kindness to the soldiers who were supposed to be the enemy. He only saw them as men who needed a little water. How do I know this to be true? That little boy was my dad. My dad. What act of kindness do you perform? You, you know, pay it forward type acts, like paying for the, the car's food behind you as you go through the drive through window at some fast food place? How do you feel when you do that, if you do? Or how about pulling over and helping somebody with a flat tire? Or maybe picking up someone who is walking along the road, carrying an empty gas can, walking to the nearest gas station, obviously to get some gas to put in the car that just ran out of gas. These and others are countless acts of kindness. They show kindness, as the Scripture says, to someone who is in need or want or maybe an act of kindness just out of the blue. Now, I'm not telling you this to puff me up, and Cindy is probably online this morning. I've been remiss this, this year because I used to go in and I would get her flowers just because. Just because. And I'd get them on Friday. And the ladies at the, the floor, flower shop in Little Rock would say, what's the event? What's the occasion? I said, it's Flower Friday. And that stuck with them. They'd see me come and they'd say, oh, it's Flower Friday. I need to pick that back up real quick. Because there's only 17 more days. <laughs> I have to ask you a question. Why? Why? I, made, I mentioned it earlier. Why do you perform acts of kindness? What is your motivation for doing so? Are you really expecting something in return because you do that act of kindness? Or are you truly being philanthropic? Now some say there is no such thing as true philanthropy. There isn't. But I'm telling you, that mindset is contrary to the teachings of Christ. I said earlier, I want to talk about what an act of kindness is. And what an act of kindness is not. Is not. We don't have to go far into our scripture text to find out what it is not. Verse 29 says, Do not let any wholesome talk come out of your mouths. What happens to somebody when you speak words that tears them down? What happens? Does this type of talk that you spoke have its intended results and that person got tore down? Why were you trying to belittle someone and your words did exactly what you were trying to do? Why? Why? The latter half of verse 29 tells us what our words should be for building others up according to their needs, not yours. There's the philanthropy right there. Their needs that it may benefit those who listen. Those who listen, because others are going to hear it too. I'm getting to that. What happens when the opposite of this kind of talk described in that verse happens? What happens when it comes out of your mouths? 
Yeah. Here's one that should send a chill up your spine. What do you think God thinks of it? Ooh, back up from the Bible on that one, Doug. What do you think God thinks about it when unwholesome talk comes out of your mouth? Verse 30 tells us that actually God is hurt by it. He's hurt by such talk. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Have you ever heard somebody talking and that somebody did not know you were hearing them and you know them to be a Christian? And you hear that talk come out of their mouth. What do you think of that person afterwards? And just imagine, here's somebody else that they don't know is listening to them or hearing them, that they only know this person to be a Christian because they know that they go to this church or that church or whatever. That's all they know about this person. I don't know them personally, I just know them to be a Christian. And they hear that unwholesome talk come out of their mouths. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you may be the only Jesus that some people see in their lifetime. How are you reflecting Christ to those who need it? God's Holy Spirit lives and breathes inside each and every one of us. I've said it many times, there's that place specifically fashioned by God, the most holy place that only the Holy Spirit fits in there. I don't care how much you search for something to fit, it's not going to fit. Nothing of this world, only God's Spirit. It is through the Holy Spirit that God knows our every thought and hears our every word. Here's my qualifying question to you. Do you think God was saddened? And that's putting it lightly. Do you think He was saddened when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden? Most absolutely so. He was deeply grieved. He was deeply saddened. We can see all through the Old Testament a saddened, bereaved God trying to call His people back to Him. Why? <laughs> After they turned their back on Him time and time again. Because He loves mankind, the pinnacle of His creation. When God hears us speak in an unchristian manner to other people, or even to people in the same church, He is truly saddened. God does not want anything coming out of our mouths. It is not building each other up. In the book of Acts, it tells us that's why we gather together for the building up of the saints, for the equipping of the saints, so when we go out into a world that doesn't have God, we need to build each other up. And with respect to things coming around, as I mentioned earlier, what is going to come back to us? What's going to come back to us when we talk in such a manner? Yes, exactly. And when it does... We're actually surprised by it. How can we treat others the way God wants us to do? Verse 31 of our text tells us how. First, we have to get rid of, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, along with every form of malice. Every form form of malice. If you have these emotions in you, I highly advise you to keep your mouth shut. Kind of stiff, pastor. If you don't like what I'm saying, take it up with my boss and his instructional manual. Nothing good. Face it, people. Nothing good can come from words spoken in bitterness. 
rage, anger, slander, and so on. Words that are derived and spoken with these emotions are nothing but destructive. Here's how God wants us to treat each other. Here's how God wants us to treat each other. Be kind. Be kind. Be compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other. Just as in Christ, God forgave you and me. That's a tall order. There's only one way we can do that. What do you think? Just imagine. Let's go to utopia for a second. What do you think a church full of people who speak kindly and compassionate to one another looks like? <gasps> I'll tell you, it's a church that is pleasing to God. It is a church that's pleasing to God who has the Holy Spirit in their thoughts, in their actions. And is it a church? It is a church that is growing. It's a church that is growing. This is exactly what a godly church looks like. It is a God-blessed church. Sadly, sadly, some in the church today want it to look like a country club or a private club where outside people aren't welcome. The people that are different from you and me, oh, they're not welcome. Today's church is under attack. It's under attack. And Satan is using the very people inside the church to do his bidding. People are questioning the validity of God's Word. And in doing so, preaching blasphemy. Nothing short of blasphemy from pulpits everywhere. Every child of God that steps inside of the church needs to have the mind of Christ when they step in or they shouldn't enter into the church at all. I should have brought my soapbox with me. What type of message, brothers and sisters in Christ, does it send to a visitor who hears unholy talk when they themselves are seeking out a body of Christ who builds each other up. Acts of kindness are born out of an attitude and a mind of Christ. If you think unholy, you will talk unholy. You can't help but do it. If you act in a bitter way to someone, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that bitterness, that bitterness is going to return to you. What goes around does come around, and you absolutely will reap what you sow. Oh, that doesn't happen. You're questioning the Word of God then. You will reap what you sow. How do I know this to be true? Not only is it said in God's Word, but let me finish. Remember that little boy in Dust Bowl, Oklahoma? My dad grew up, and in his late teens, he joined the Army. And over the next 22 years, he was in Korea, two tours in Vietnam, in Iran. Before his first tour in Vietnam, he was reassigned to Germany, and the family got to go to Schweinfurt, Germany. What a place for a young little boy to be. Units there, back in the day, back in the 60s, units were constantly, constantly training with battles, for battles with the Soviet Union. It was called a reforger. Those of you in the military recognize that term. The Soviet Union was the number one adversary to the United States forces. They were trained for weeks and months out in the field doing nothing but training. On one of these, on one such training exercise, Dad was with an artillery unit, and they set up, went to set up their command tent. Well, the command tent encroached over on the farmer's land. 
the commander of the unit, the captain, and dad as the first sergeant, went to that farmer. They had to ask permission to encroach on his property with one tent. And they promised to return the ground to its original condition when they were done. The farmer agreed. He allowed it. And in true hospitality fashion, invited the captain and my dad to dinner that evening. They talked. The captain and this farmer talked and talked. Finally, the captain said, Sir, you speak English very well. Where did you learn? The farmer told his two guests he was a German soldier in World War II. And he was captured and he was sent to a POW camp and he learned English from the guards. He didn't know exactly where it was, but he says he thinks it was in a place called Oklahoma. He did remember though, clearly how hot it was. What he remembered most, most, was a little boy with big ears who didn't wear shoes and had dirty overalls on, who would bring a bucket of water that had a little oily taste to it to the fence and hand that ladle through the fence to the German soldiers. He said the reason that this sticks in his mind so much is not just the act of kindness, but how the little boy's name was spelled. It wasn't spelled like a boy, B-O-B-B-Y, but his name was spelled like a girl, B-O-B-B-I-E. Dad swallowed hard. And I'm sure with a shaky voice said, Sir, that little boy was me. And the farmer said, no way, no way. Dad pulled out his military ID card and pulled his dog tags out and showed the man. Yes, that was my dad. Now the unit spent weeks in the field after that. That was the first night. They spent weeks over a month. I will tell you, every evening for dinner, that man had my father sitting at his table with his boots under his table, feeding him like a king every single night until they left the field. That is what goes around comes around. All of that return for the one simple act of a little boy. You may have a story like this. We all do of the acts of kindness. Maybe the opposite. We can all remember times when we said something that we shouldn't have or did something that we shouldn't have and it came back to us. Church, get rid of the malice. Get rid of the malice that can tear a church apart. Love one another. Well, Doug, honestly, some of us are just a little too hard to love. Gotcha. I'm in the group. Sometimes I'm a little hard to love myself. You can't love some of us with your own strength. You can only love those that are unlovable with the mind and the strength of Christ. This is Christ's church. It's not a country club. Jesus died for this church. I think Jesus' act alone of going to the cross would cause us to treat each other like the precious possessions we are. Those who Jesus gave everything for. Love each other, brothers and sisters, with the love of Christ. It is a commandment given to us by God the Father. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Would you pray, please pray with me? Father God, we thank You for Your Word. Sometimes, Father, it's a little hard for us to, to swallow. Sometimes it's hard for us to understand. But Lord, there are some things that don't need a whole lot of explanation. You tell us to love one another with the same love that You love us. The same love that Jesus loved us. The same love, Father, 
that a soldier has for the next soldier in, in next to him that he would give his life to save that fellow soldier. Yes, Father, that's the kind of love that you want us to love one another. Sometimes it's hard. Father, give us the strength. Give us your strength, not our own. Give us your strength to love on each other the way you would want us to do so. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. We're observing a holy ordinance that, as, as you hear me say so many times, is one of my favorite ordinances in the church because it gives us that little snapshot, just a little snapshot of what we will experience at the great wedding feast. Just some housekeeping issues. Uh, I have, uh, uh, we will be doing um, by wafer today, will not, will not be intention. Um, as you approach, I just ask that you cup your hands and I will place it in your hand, the wafer, and then you can step to either side and receive the juice from, from those serving. Uh, there are trash receptacles on either side of the, the sanctuary that you can deposit that cup in. This table is not, it is not a mountainside table. This table is not a Methodist table. This table is Christ's table, and as such, all are welcome. This is between you and God. This is not between you and me or you and the church. This approaching this table is between you and God. Treat it as such as a holy ordinance ordained by Him. Hear this invitation. I've said it so many times, but truly listen to the words this morning. Christ our Lord, Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly, earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved You with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done Your will. We have broken Your law. We have rebelled against Your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Would you please join with me in the great thanksgiving? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he gave thanks. And he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, 
we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. By Your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through Your Son, Jesus Christ, Father, with Your Holy Spirit, in Your Holy Church, all honor and glory is Yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I would invite those who are going to be assisting me this morning to come forward. the body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. We'll begin at the back of the sanctuary and just work our way forward. I'll invite those who are singing in the, uh, the praise team and also the, the sound booth to come forward first.
Would you pray with me, please? Father, we are so thankful and we're so blessed that you have provided this ordinance, this ceremony, this rite that we could come and spend a, a moment of intimacy with you. Father, your son died so that we could have this. Even on that final night that he met with his apostles, the closest 12 that he had, he knew. He knew that one would betray him. But Father, yet, he washed each and every one of their feet. He lowered himself to a position that's an example for all of us to serve each other serve each other unashamedly and without reservation. And Father, then He fed each one. Help us to feed each other the way that You would have us to do so with acts of kindness, with positive talk, and lifting each other up in prayer. Father, help us to love each other as Christ loved every one of those twelve with his whole heart. Lord, we thank you for this. In Christ's name, amen. Would you please stand? I noticed that there wasn't a whole lot of amens and that's rights today. Sometimes when we read God's word, it's a little hard for us to swallow. But we know it to be right. We know it to be true. We don't question that. I hope you walk away from today's service with the idea that Christ died for you. He loved you and Christ died for you. And He wants nothing more in this world than to you, for you to be His child and for you to treat each other like the family of God. If you would like to have prayer, or if you need prayer, want me to pray, this, or this altar area is open for you, I'll be standing here and I'll silence my mic so they don't, don't hear our prayer. You come forward. If you've been coming here for a while and you want your life placed in this church, this body of believers, you come forward now and we will welcome you. Whatever it is God is asking you to do, all I can ask you to is just obey. Just obey what the, the creator of the universe is asking you to do. He's not going to force anybody to do anything. He's just asking. He's asking and he's pleading. As we sing, and we're not going to sing long. So good to have you here today. Truly, it is, even though it's kind of rainy outside, it's good to be indoors with the family of God today. Tell somebody that you love them in Christ before you leave. Just tell them. Not only will that make you feel good, but just think of how it will make the other person feel. Would you please bow your head and receive this blessing? Father God, I thank you for all of those who tuned in today live on Facebook. Father, the medium is just it's wonderful that we can reach people that are far-reaching, thousands of miles away. 
with this. Father, today's word, we thank you for that. I ask that you plant it deep in our hearts that those seeds can grow into productivity. Those seeds can grow into healing. Those seeds can grow into building each other up. Father, watch over us. Guide us. Keep us from unholy and unhealthy things this week. Protect us from a world that doesn't want to hear from you. And bring us back here safe next week. Father, we love you with our whole hearts and we give our hearts to you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Go in peace.